Probably one of the most common starting points for a Vectorworks document is usually from either a scanned in hand drawn plan or a scanned PDF or an image from another drafting software. It doesn't matter where it came from. DWG and drawing it from scratch are also very common. We'll cover those in other videos, but this is the most common workflow that I have mostly for brand new users that are coming in, especially if they used to come from hand drawing. The first thing you'll do, and this is this works for images or PDFs. They basically work about the same way. I'll, I'll, I'll clarify the distance differences as we come along. First thing you'll do is you'll take your image, drag it right on the drawing area and let go, and it'll trigger the image import. This one in particular is a PNG we'll be using. Uh, we'll go ahead and keep the high quality. There are reasons you would want to use this to keep it lower, but for the initial import where it's what we're going to be basing our plan off of, the maximum resolution is usually fine. We'll click OK. Now there's a couple problems you'll see right now. First one being that this is rotated completely wrong. Now this is very simple. This is, I could probably use the shortcut for rotate to the right. Yeah, and then we're done. So I could do that with modify, rotate, rotate right 90 degrees. That solves this problem. But what if it had been tilted at a different angle? What if it had been just slightly skewed? That's usually a time for the rotate tool. Do not use rotate plan to fix this problem. Rotate plan is for after you've already started drawing and you need to align things to your screen. Don't start off with rotate plan just to fix an image import. So what you'll do is you'll zoom in as close as you can. We'll disable, you'll see See how I'm not able to snap to this corner? That's because snap to grid is turned on. Disable that, get right up to this corner, get right along this line. I don't want that angle snapping. There we are, I bring this up. And if I hold shift, it'll let me lock to rotate it horizontal. There we are, and that brings it up straight. However, I wanna have it 90 degrees to the right of that. There we are. So now our lines are straight. So a lot of the time in a scanned, in drawing, it'll be slightly tilted. If they had it on the scanner, better be slightly off. The rotate tool is your friend. It'll get you lined up right away. Now, the next thing we want to do is notice this building is, it looks like barely even a meter across this image. Yeah, <laughs> a third of a meter across. So that's a bit small. We're not doing a dollhouse here. So we want to get it up to scale because currently this document, active layer scale, set to one to one. We don't need to worry about that. That's fine. We just need to bring these objects up to actual size. We have a few ways of doing this. Uh, the easiest of which is down here. This is the meters, the meter bar. So we know that the distance between here and here is two meters exactly. So we don't really need to do a lot of guesswork. There are other ways you could do it though. If you imported an image that didn't have measurements like this, it didn't have the notations, you can infer a few things. Generally walls are a certain thickness or you know, or if you know what the thickness of the walls are, you can also use this for the distance of the thickness of a wall. Generally doors are about three feet or a portion of a meter across. You can measure that instead. But what we'll do is instead of trying to use modify, scale objects and guessing what we need to scale it by or doing a lot of math, we'll use symmetric by distance. Select symmetric by distance and then this is what it currently is. Ignore these values for the time being. They don't matter for the moment. We're gonna click this button here and that dialog will go away. What it's expecting from you is to click two points. We'll start here and we'll go to here. And then this is the value that it currently is. So 0 0.024 meters, way smaller than it should be. We want this to actually be two meters. This is what we want that new distance to be. We'll click OK and everything will disappear because we've zoomed now way out. There we are. So now these objects are close. So if I go to go constrain dimension and I go to dimension this room, I'll just get it vaguely right here. Oops. See how this is too small? That's because we're at one to one. We'll go ahead and fix that now. Now is a good time to change that. Make this, oh, let's say one to 50, it's fine. There we are. That didn't resize this, that just resized the value of the zoom level. There we go, and 3.99, that's relatively close. And then of course, it depends on how this was measured. So you can do this again if you want. So if I say that I know that that two meter value, I don't like how close that got for me. I want to go over here where this is a dining room. We're clearly 6.51. Clearly that's between this point and this point. I can go and check that. Constrain dimension right there, right there and check that value. 6.7, so it's a little larger. So I could keep doing this again. I could go to with this object selected, just this object, just the bitmap selected, modify and scale objects again. Don't change any values and then simply use the same tools again. So I'll click this point and I'll go straight across to this point and I'll make that 6.51 meters. 
and it'll adjust it slightly. Now if I measure that, right about there, very close, 6.519, there we are, very close. And that's within pixels accurate. Now, what you do have to keep in mind though, well what if I measured that, however when I measured this it wasn't 3.75. That would only be okay if you knew that the drawing that you had scanned in was exactly to scale. It was exactly accurate. With this, it's probably going to be pretty close because this looks like a CAD program of some kind or at least Photoshop was used to make this object. If you're doing it from a hand-drawn scan, it's entirely possible that you will not be able to get those to jive perfectly. You need to pick one that you rely on, stick with that, and then start drawing your other objects after the fact. Now, there's two ways we could go about this. We could start drawing this... Uh, it looks like it has an ex this exterior type of wall, and it looks like this is a different wall type on the other side here, and then you have the interior walls. We could simply just start with the actual wall tool itself, and then just start drawing. But you'll notice here, we want to set it to, so it draws to the right of our control line. So we'll start it here. See how the wall is drawing off to the right here? Very short example. I'll delete that very quickly. If I had picked one of these modes, I would need to trace the interior line. If I traced with this mode on the exterior line, the wall will be outside and my drawing will be very, very inaccurate very quickly. Center is a lot harder because you sort of have to see here, you have to sort of guess where the middle is. So generally you want to start with one of these objects and then draw out this wall. Now this would be a little tedious. There's a few, this is a relatively straight bit here. We don't need to worry about that. We can turn this corner and turn that corner. This one isn't too complicated, but for all these interior walls, we don't want to have to trace those out manually all of the time. So another way you can do that instead of doing that, that, instead of individually drawing every single wall, is to get the gist of a particular room. We'll go down here into the family room, and we'll trace just the interior of this room. We'll ignore the closet for the time being, of course. We'll just save a little time here. There, and this is the interior, and these dimensions are relatively close to what the values were. 5.58, 5.74. 3.87, 3.69, that's very close. You can keep going as accurate as you want. I suspect that this image that I've scanned in is not perfect, and these values are rounded heavily, so you're not going to get it exactly accurate, but if you've drawn it and you know it was to scale, you can get it as accurate as you need to. Now, this particular room here, just simple made up of four walls, and I just have a rectangle. I can either individually draw out a number of rectangles for each of these rooms. Go right to there. Start from that point, go right to here, get our smart point so that's lined up a nice straight edge, and then you can simply add these surfaces together. Right click, add surface, and they'll combine into one object. But we'll start with a very simple example of just a rectangle. We want to convert this to walls, but we know this is the interior dimensions of the room. And since it's the interior, that tells us what we need to do for the conversion. So we'll go to modify and it'll either be modify and create objects from shapes or depending on the workspace you're in, we're in architect at the moment, it'll be AEC create objects from shapes. This is a rectangle, but we want to convert that to walls. Now see the offset value. This is very important for walls. If we did center right now, what it would do is it would use the wall tool and draw in that center mode right along this line. So the room would be too small in every single direction. We want the offset to be to the left. So the walls will be drawn to the left or the outside of this rectangle. And we'll click OK. So now this has drawn our walls and pretty much matched that face. That's very simple for a rectangular room. That's, a, that's not a lot of work and it's very easy. We'll, we can still have this rectangle. We can delete this. So we've vaguely got our walls and we can add our bricks after the fact. You can also do this by just simply drawing out the interior shape of every room in here, and then we can go about joining our walls and changing things afterwards. So to add in this closet, we would then simply pipe up this tool, pull up wall, go right there, right to that spot. There we are, and then get our walls. I recommend um, when you start out with this, giving using a regular generic walls. Don't don't bother with the style yet. You can always swap the style out later. Changing the opacity of the walls. So change the fill opacity down. I mean, you can link the two. It doesn't really matter for this. So that you can always see what's underneath it. This makes it easier to go in and add things like doors. So, I mean, you can still have your wall here and then draw it in. However, notice something. If I click here and move it, oh, now everything's misaligned. I've now made a mess. Oh, put it back. Oh, darn. So you can just undo back to before you did the mess. Before we do any more work, simply right click on the image and choose 
lock. It will keep it here, but I will not be able to grab it. I will not be able to move that object. I will, however, be able to select my objects and change their opacity and, and as I would expect, I can still move them. However, I can't click and drag over these objects. You'll get a bonk because it thinks I'm trying to drag this object. So rather than deal with all of that, what you can do, we'll move these later. So what we'll do is we'll take this image, we'll unlock it, just the image, and we'll move it onto a new layer, a new design layer, we'll call it tracing. Now, do you see how this has changed dramatically? That's because we have view, layer, options, gray, snap, modify others. We want show, snap, modify others. Now do you see that the walls are there, but they're underneath, they're underneath this object? That's because I need to go to tools and organization and under design layers, I have to make sure that this tracing layer is stacked underneath my real layer that I'm doing. Now we created a new layer and we, we already had it 150, so this changed it to the same scale. Keep these at the same scale if you want this to be accurate. Don't change that scale unless you're, you have a very good reason for doing so. If you don't know why you would do it, don't do it, leave them the same scale. So now, this is still unlocked, but what we can do is simply change the layer options. So we can go to view, layer options, change it to show snap others, so it will still show us our image, and then change the active layer to just design layer one. Once we do that, we have just our objects. So now I'm able to click within the bounds of this image and select and highlight different objects because this is on another layer. I can't click it. I can't accidentally grab it. I can click and modify anything that's on design layer one. You can see that in the object info palette, but I can't click this because it's on that other layer. If I switch back to the tracing layer, I'd be able to select the image, but I won't be able to select my walls. That's the easiest way to set up uh, tracing over top of an existing image. This image is now not in my way. I can do my regular drag select without having to zoom all the way out to get past the image to do drag select. It makes life a lot easier. It's just a nice little tip that just makes things simpler.